Kendall Fuller was the best cornerback on the market, in my opinion, especially if you got him playing off coverage. He's so quick breaking on routes from a backpedal or a standstill, and he has outstanding route recognition. On this play against Atlanta, he's just reading the quarterback. He sees it's a one-step drop. The quarterback hits his back foot, lifts his shoulder to release the ball, and in that moment, he bites on this quick slant before the receiver is even out of his break, and he gets that inside leverage on the slant, can't come down with the interception. Another play from the same game, again, the quarterback hits his back foot, raises his arm before the receiver is even out of his break. Fuller's accelerating into this passing window, undercuts the speed out and gets the interception. On this play against Atlanta, again, he's reading the quarterback. Marquise Brown's running a quick slant. He's got perfect timing breaking on this route, explosive click and close to force the incompletion. And then he also does a good job from off coverage when he's reading the receiver. On this play, he's reading the stem. He sees the receiver start to break inside. He closes that cushion and in the same motion, his eyes shoot up to the quarterback. He doesn't over pursue and draw a penalty he arrives at the catch point under control rakes through the hands and breaks up the pass and you really see this all over his tape just instant route recognition and acceleration from off coverage and then control and hand-eye coordination at the catch point it's basically a wasted play to run a quick slant against Kendall Fuller from off coverage he also does a really good job of defending double moves on stop and goes he isn't over aggressive biting on that initial break you can see on this play he's reading Josh Allen's seven step drop he's expecting some sort of deep concept. He's got the peripheral vision to read the quarterback and then also see Gabe Davis accelerating out of this first break. He recovers depth, stays on top of the route, and then high points the ball and gets the interception. Another play here where he's in a side turn and cover three. The quarterback rolls out. He initially sinks to stick with this curl route, but he has a really good sense for Michael Wilson accelerating and attacking his blind spot. He gets downfield, very comfortable turning and locating the ball, and he's disruptive at the catch point. On this play, Garrett Wilson tries to do a slant into a fade. Not the best route in my opinion, but it's another good example of just the composure with defending double moves, receivers attacking his blind spot. He has that eye balance to watch the quarterback, but also understand routes that are developing behind him. He stays focused on the ball and gets the pass break up in the corner of the end zone. In terms of one-on-one -on -one coverage this past season, he basically had one bad play against the Dolphins and then a bad game against the Bears. Outside of that, he was pretty much lights out. He was late to accelerate and keep up with Tyreek Hill on this post route. It looks like he was expecting center field safety help. I think he has adequate speed, especially if he's playing off coverage, but not someone that's going to keep up with four, three deep threats one on one. And then he just had a rough game in week five. This first play, he just misses breaking on this comeback route to DJ Moore, and he kind of went all out for it, and there was no safety help. So DJ Moore was able to run after the catch for a touchdown. And then he gave up another touchdown to DJ Moore on a double move. It looks like he's expecting back shoulder out to the sideline. You can tell by the way he turns his head, but Fields puts this in the back corner of the end zone, so he just misjudged the ball placement here. And he actually gave up six touchdowns in 2023, which was his career high. Only three of those were true one-on-one -on -one losses, the plays that I've already showed you. The rest were just missed assignment, miscommunication type of things, or like struggling to fight through traffic. So right here, the Falcons run play action. Jonu Smith leaks out to the flat. Kendall Fuller gets out leveraged and gives up the easy touchdown. And then on this play, they're running an underneath route with basically a pick from Garrett Wilson. Another play where it looks like he just misjudges the ball because you can tell he raises his hands up like he's about to get the interception and that causes him to slow down and surrender the middle of the field for the touchdown. And then the last touchdown was just two deep crossers. This is incredibly difficult to defend to work through all this traffic over the middle of the field. Ideally, the secondary would be passing these two routes off. So Fuller would take the deep crosser from 18 and then the other corner would pick up Darius Slayton from the opposite side side, but again, Fuller gets out leveraged and can't make up that separation. Outside of all the off coverage stuff, I think the most impressive part about Kendall Fuller's tape is how reliable of a tackler he is. He had the fifth lowest missed tackle rate out of NFL corners this past season at 5.1%. Usually 10% is the benchmark for whether or not a corner has a tackling problem, and Fuller's had less than a 10% missed tackle rate every season since 2019. He's a reliable wrap-up tackler. He's a willing contributor to the run fit. He'll fly down into the alley, shed blocks, make physical tackles in the open field. He's also had a run defense grade above 70 every season since 2018. And that used to kind of be thought of as like a secondary skill set for corners. But nowadays, if you've got a corner that can't tackle, offenses are so good at exploiting that. Most of the best rushing offenses are built on attacking the alley and outside the hashes and taking advantage of defensive backs that can't
a tackle. So with Kendall Fuller, you can be pretty confident that you won't have any issues in that area. He's gonna limit those 10 yard chunk plays to two or three yards pretty consistently. And in coverage, you know, he had a bit of a down year just in terms of touchdowns allowed, but he still had the 15th lowest yards per cover snap. He doesn't commit penalties. Outside of some assignment and communication stuff, which seemed to be a consistent issue throughout all of Washington's secondary, he wasn't getting beat that often. So I don't really view that as him falling off because of age regression or anything. I still think he's a stable corner that's gonna raise the floor of your secondary.